1924 to 1987 dividing his time between America and Europe, James Arthur Baldwin wrote numerous novels, essays, and plays that vividly depict the struggle of blacks in white America. As an active member of the civil rights movement, Baldwin continually maintained that it was only through non-violent action that racial equality could be obtained. Growing up as a preacher, Baldwin was born on August 2, 1924, in Harlem. The illegitimate son of Emma Bertie's Jones, a domestic worker continually surrounded by hardships and poverty, Baldwin turned to literature for escape at a very young age. He was a voracious reader and spent much of his childhood in local libraries. By age 12, he had begun writing and published his first story in a church newspaper. Baldwin's mother had meanwhile married David Baldwin, a factory worker who was also a storefront preacher in a Pentecostal church in their neighborhood. Despite their unloving and difficult relationship, Baldwin adopted both his stepfather's last name and his passionate faith. By the time Baldwin was 14, he was preaching regularly in the church. This experience in the black religious community shaped the themes of his early literary texts. His first novel, Go Tell It on the Mountain, published in 1953, follows a young boy who is driven to become a minister by his brutal stepfather. Although this character eventually finds real religious faith, the novel explores the constant push and pull of a demanding father figure and a mysterious, secretive mother. In 1941, at age 17, Baldwin left both his home and the church. Although his work would continue to draw on a religious rhetorical style, in the early 1940s, Baldwin began to slowly shift his devotion from his Pentecostal roots toward his other childhood passion of writing. He took a job working on the New Jersey Railroad before moving to New York City. It was while living in Greenwich Village that Baldwin first met Richard Wright. The older writer was impressed by Baldwin's early essays and book reviews, which had been published in The New Leader and The Nation. Wright's pivotal novel, Native Son, had a lasting effect on the young Baldwin, and even inspired the title of his 1955 book of stories and essays, Notes of a Native Son. As the 1940s drew to a close, Baldwin became increasingly frustrated with the prevailing racial discrimination he experienced on a daily basis in New York. In 1948, he left the United States for Paris in order to escape these prejudices. He was supported and assisted in this move by Richard Wright, who also chose to spend large periods of time in the more creative and culturally liberal Europe. The friendship between the two writers suffered an irreparable breach however, in 1949, when Baldwin published Everybody's Protest Novel, an essay that criticized the lack of character development in Wright's novels. A View of America from Europe Over the next eight years, Baldwin lived in Europe, moving among France, Switzerland, and Turkey. This was a period of financial hardship for the author, but also proved to be an extremely creative and prolific period. In addition to completing both his first novel and Notes of a Native Son, he also wrote a second novel entitled Giovanni's Room. In this second book, Baldwin tackled issues of sexuality and interracial relationships for the first time as the novel's narrator, David, recounts the execution of his Italian lover, Giovanni, after he is accused of murder. Throughout his time in Europe, Baldwin was concerned primarily with the experiences of blacks in white American culture. He often claimed that living in other countries provided him with a clearer view of his own society. In 1957, driven by a sense of responsibility to the cause, Baldwin returned to New York and immediately immersed himself in the civil rights movement. He spent an extended period of time traveling in the South, which resulted in the non-fiction book The Fire Next Time. Examining the Black Muslim Movement in America, the text assesses various peaceful and non-violent methods of combating the racial divide. Although he was attacked by many critics for his pacifist stance, Baldwin passionately believed that only through love and brotherhood could the tangled social issues of the day reach any kind of resolution. In the late 1960s, Baldwin's non-violent position within the civil rights movement was sorely tested. The period of great hope that culminated with the March on Vassington in 1963 was quickly followed by the assassinations of both Martin Luther King, Jr., and Malcolm X. In anger and disappointment, Baldwin fled back to France. His central novel of this period, If Beale Street Could Talk, published in 1974, received wide critical condemnation for its disillusionment with the civil rights cause. 
Throughout the last years of his life, Baldwin moved back and forth between America and Europe. He found an outlet for his sense of social responsibility in teaching, and joined the faculty of the five colleges in western Massachusetts. He worked closely with a young African-American writer at Mount Holyoke College, Susan Laurie Parks, who went on to win the Pulitzer Prize for Drama in 2002. Baldwin died of stomach cancer on December 1, 1987, in St. Paul, France. Over the course of his career, he produced over 20 books of fiction, non-fiction, and poetry, as well as several plays. Although he continues to influence black writers and activists to this day, Baldwin was ultimately concerned with universal themes. He refused to limit himself to the confines of his identity as an African-American writer, and challenged himself instead to explore, in both fiction and non-fiction, the experiences of citizens of the world. Themes and Techniques Baldwin's prose is characterized by a style of beauty and telling power. His language seems deliberately chosen to shock and disturb, arouse, repel, and finally shake the reader out of complacency into a concerned state of action. His major themes are repeated, the terrible pull of love and hate between black and white Americans, the constant war in one possessed by inverted sexuality between guilt or shame and ecstatic abandon, and such moral, spiritual, and ethical values as purity of motive and inner wholeness, the gift of sharing and extending love, the charm of goodness versus evil. He tunes an inner ear to the disturbing social upheaval of contemporary life, and to the rewarding ecstasy of artistic achievement. All such positive values are set in continual warfare against racism, industrialism, materialism, and a global power struggle. Everything demeaning to the human spirit is attacked with vigor and righteous indignation. Final Works Baldwin remained abroad much of the last 15 years of his life, but he never gave up his American citizenship. The citizens of France nevertheless embraced Baldwin as one of their own, and in 1986 he was accorded one of the country's highest accolades when he was named Commander of the Legion of Honor. He died of stomach cancer, November 30, 1987, in St. Paul de Vence, France, and was buried in Harlem. One of his last works to see publication during his lifetime was a well-regarded anthology of essays The Price of the Ticket, Collected Nonfiction, 1948-1985. Literary Achievement Baldwin's greatest achievement as a writer was his ability to address American race relations from a psychological perspective. In his essays in fiction he explored the implications of racism for both the oppressed and the oppressor, suggesting repeatedly that all people suffer in a racist climate. Baldwin's fiction and plays also explore the burdens a callous society can impose on a sensitive individual. Two of his best-known works, the novel Go Tell It on the Mountain and the play The Amen Corner were inspired by his years with the Pentecostal Church in Harlem. In Go Tell It on the Mountain, for instance, a teenaged boy struggles with a repressive stepfather and experiences a charismatic spiritual awakening. Later Baldwin novels deal frankly with homosexuality and interracial love affairs love in both its sexual and spiritual forms became an essential component of the quest for self-realization for both Baldwin and his characters.